We're going to review some of the patterns and trends you're going to see on the periodic table. And the one I want to focus on on this video is how when you move across the periodic table, the actual diameter of the atom gets smaller. The atomic mass will get larger, but the actual atom size will get smaller. And I want to explore why that could possibly be. And before I get started with that, we're going to have to explore or revisit Coulomb's law. So just a reminder of Coulomb's law, like, like charges repel each other. I have here two negative particles, and if I more or less moving this along, you're going to recognize that they are moving apart from each other. They repel each other. Now, if I have opposite charges, where I have a negative and a positive charge, what you're going to notice is that they actually attract each other and want to come together. This, this Coulomb's law is going to be essential in understanding how it is that atomic radius actually gets smaller as the atoms move across the periodic table. The reason that Coulomb's law is so important is when we look at the actual atom structure. We know that inside the atom, in the nucleus, we have positive protons, and on the outside of the atom, far, far away from the nucleus, we have our first electron, and that's a negative charge. And we know that those positive and negative charges attract. And for that reason, the electron stays in orbit to the around the nucleus. But now let's take a look at an atom, in which case you have two protons. In the case of an atom with two protons, In the case of an atom that has two protons, what you're going to notice is, is that now you have instead this force that's a little unexpected, and that is that each proton pulls the electron towards it. That means this proton is pulling this electron, but this proton is pulling the electron towards it as well. All right, a lot of people have the misconception that one electron is being pulled by one proton and the other electron is being pulled by the other. And that's in fact not true. This single electron feels the force of two protons. That means one negative charge is actually being pulled by two positive charges. And that's the case for this electron as well. This electron is being pulled towards the center by two protons. And if you consider the game of tug and war, where you have one proton or one person on one end and the other, one other person on the other end, the pull is more or less equal. They're, they're going to come together, but probably not that close. In comparison to a tug of war, where we have one person on one end and two people on the other end, you know that the end that has those two people pulling is going to pull that electron or that person closer to themselves. And for that reason, what happens is that these electrons get pulled closer to the nucleus. And so as a result, you notice now that the diameter of the atom is smaller. And the reason is, is because those two protons are pulling each of those electrons individually closer to it. So let's now take a look at the next example. In theory, if we now have three protons in the center, in the nucleus, again, the same situation, each electron feels the full force of three protons. So this would be the game of tug of war, where you have three people on one end and one person on the other end. And so as you notice, that means that this electron is being pulled towards the center by three positive charges. Remember, this is a negative charge. And so for that reason, it's going to be pulled even further in. Just like this electron 
is being pulled in by these three electrons, excuse me, these three protons. And just as this electron is being pulled into the center by these three protons, okay? So as a result, with three protons pulling each indi uh, electron individually, the atom gets even smaller because those strong protons can pull that individual electron in much tighter. This is the reason that as you go across the periodic table, if we go back to our slide, the slide that the actual diameter gets smaller. And the reason is in lithium, we have three protons pulling. In beryllium, we have four protons pulling each individual electron. Here we have five protons pulling six, seven, eight, Excuse me, six, we have nitrogen missing here, uh, seven, eight, nine, and lastly, 10 protons pulling each individual electron. And so they can pull those electrons closer to it. So exploring the next part of a periodic table trend, you'll notice that as we go down the periodic table, the atom size gets larger again, even though we have more protons. So theoretically, based on what I had just said, is that if you have 11 protons, such as sodium has, it has 11 protons, and potassium has 19 protons, the theory is these atoms should get smaller because remember each single electron feels the full force of all those protons. So something unusual is happening and that's something that we call electron shielding. So let me go through three examples. Here we have hydrogen on the very top. Hydrogen has one proton and one electron and these two positive and well, the, this positive and negative charge are attracted to each other. So hydrogen uh, has the size that it does. Now in terms of lithium, lithium has three protons. And yes, each of those protons is pulling the lithium electron towards it. So we have three being pulled this way, uh, three protons pulling the electron towards the center, and in this case, just as well, and in this case, just as well. However, do you notice what this electron encounters? It encounters this negative force wall, for lack of better words. It's sort of like this force field, and we know that negatives repel negatives, which means that even though this electron is being attracted to those three positive protons, it can't get too close because of that negative force field from these two electrons. And we call that negative force field, we call that electron shielding. They provide a shield of negative force that prevents this electron to getting closer towards the nucleus. And because it can't come closer into the nucleus, the size is in fact larger because that electron has to stay further out to the outside. So let's take a look at the example of this sodium. This sodium has 11 protons. And yes, each of those 11 protons is pulling each single electron towards it and so for that reason, notice how close these electrons are to the center. They're closer than this first electron is to this one. The only issue is, is we yet again have in this case another force field. We have eight electrons um, that are all exuding negative charges. And so for that reason, this force field and this force field prevent this electron from coming very close to the nucleus. This electron feels the pull
it feels the pull of 11 positive protons, but at the same time, it feels the uh, repulsion feels repulsion of two electron clouds. And so for that reason, that electron is even further out from the nucleus because of those two negative electron shells. And for that reason, just recapping, for that reason, remember this has only this one has one shell. This has two shells. This has three shells. And this has four shells and so forth. And remember, the nucleus is very small, so it actually really doesn't affect the size of an actual atom. It's the electron clouds, those shells that affect the size.